Hello and welcome to the second geostatistic course with QGIS and R. The topic of this course is exploratory data analysis, bivariate analysis. Before to get involved in this second course, I highly recommend to watch the first course. It was also about exploratory data analysis, but in this case, the main topic was univariate analysis. It is essential to understand this first course before to take the second one. Now, let's see what is the lesson for today. This is the third lesson of the second geostatistic course with QGIS and R. And today we are going to be talking about covariance and correlation coefficient. We are going to see the definition of covariance and how we can interpret the results. Later, we are going to make a comparison between the covariance and the variance, not only related with the mathematical expressions, but also related to the graphical interpretation of both parameters. Then we are going to make also a comparison between the covariance and the correlation, and what is the difference between both of them. Later, we are going to create the scripts of Pearson's correlation and also the Spearman correlation. And we are going to run these scripts in QGIS with our data set. And we are going to do the interpretation of our results in both parameters. At the end of the lesson, we are going to load the Muse River data set related with contaminated soils, and we are going to create a script to plot not only two uh, quantitative variables that are going to be the zinc concentration and the lead concentration, but also we are going to add in that graph one qualitative variable that is going to be the type of soil. Then we are going to run that script with QGIS. Is this one over here? Then run, double click to open. And this graph is very interesting because as I said, in this graph we have two quantitative variables they are the lead concentration and the zinc concentration. And also we have one qualitative variable that is the type of soil. This type of graph is really important in geoscience because you can compile a lot of information just in one graph and you can see a lot of things. For example, in this case, uh, you have to be aware that the contaminant is going to have a different behavior depending if the contaminant is at the soil 1, soil 2, and soil 3. And sometimes, for example, you can have uh, outliers, right? And if you compile the proper data, then you, you can identify and you can justify why uh, these outliers are present in your data. Then the point is to understand the behavior of your data. As an example, in this graph, we can see that the highest concentrations are related with the type of soil number one. Then if you made this graph, but you didn't plot the categorical variable, maybe you are going to miss that information. Or maybe you are going to interpret that information with a different graph. And maybe this information is important, maybe it's not important. Or maybe you need to add extra information to have a better uh, understanding of the behavior of your data. At the end, the important thing is to have uh, different tools to make the interpretation of your data. And this kind of tool, it's a really important source of information. Then you have to, to know how to use it and you have to know how to interpret the data. Also in this lesson, I created a script where you can plot uh, a scatter plot with also two quantitative uh, variables and two categorical variables. Now I'm going to show you the graph. As you can see, this graph is the same as the one I showed you before, but here we added the distance to the river with a different colors. And for the type of soil, we changed the, the shape. This graph is even more powerful than the other one 
but what you don't want to do is to overcrowd the the graph with a lot of information in this case for example two quantitative variables and two categorical variables is good enough to provide a lot of information even in order to create uh, this categorical variable i i modify the attribute table over here open i created this new uh, field distance to the river and you can see also how i did it on on the on the video for this lesson and if we go back to the to the graph what we can see over here is the highest concentrations are in this range to the river from 0 to 100 meters and it could be indicated that the concentration of uh, values that are really high in sink is related with the float area of the river well that's it for today remember that this course it's not available in youtube if you want to have access to the second geostatistic course you have to go to geo rgb community website at thiscourse.online then go to courses and here you have that course the first course is totally for free but the second course the price is 30 dollars thank you very much for watching this video and see you on the next lesson